Testing, testing. Can um, everyone hear me okay? Yeah, the RH um, negative blood thing is something I'm going to be studying coming up as soon as we can get some samples of uh, ancient blood from textiles of the Paracas people. Okay, everyone can hear me. That's great. Well, I don't really have any uh, amazing updates to say, except that we're leaving in a few days for England, where we're going to go to Stonehenge and attend a conference, and I'm going to have 10, uh, 10 talks that are going to be recorded for YouTube. Um, and aside from that, um, I just wanted to show you some ancient artifacts from the Paracas uh, Museum here in Peru. This, of course, again, once again, this is a copy, exact, exact resin copy of an elongated skull, uh, probably about a nine or 10 year old uh, woman or girl. So again, it's not an original skull, but it's an exact copy of one. And here are some artifacts, here's some ancient artifacts from the Paracas Museum that show elongated heads. You see this one. This is made of a very hard stone, uh, probably serpentine. And then this is a little bronze figure. Again, you see the obvious representation of an elongated head. This is a this is a male figure with long long hair. It's made out of bronze, but it's quite heavy, so it could also contain some gold. I'm not selling anything. The, uh, these are just being shown. These are artifacts of the Paracas History Museum. This is another little bronze artifact. And then this is another one. You see, quite a clear representation, either of a turban or an elongated head. And then finally, yep, cone heads. And this one here, this is, again, probably 2,000 years old. You see, this is the god Viracocha in the middle, flanked on either side by women with elongated heads. Hello, Austria. Uh, Giorgio Zuccolis and David Childress. Well, actually both David and Giorgio are wonderful people. They're very down to earth guys, very easy to get along with. They're not arrogant in any way, shape or form. Uh, I get along with both of them very well. Greetings, Scotland. I'll be in uh, Yorkshire next month, or actually this month, so not quite Scotland. Uh, the Richard structure is possible location for Atlantis. Uh, Jimmy did a very good video. I just finished watching it, and it's it's uh, it's quite intriguing. One problem is that it's uh, the elevation is over a thousand feet, but the uh, dimensions and description. Uh, are very similar to Atlantis, so it's a that's a relatively new find, as I can tell, and that's really quite intriguing. Uh, Viracocha is shown to have a square head. Actually, that's a um, that's a type of of um, head garment that uh, that he's wearing. It's like a band around his head, and conical hats like that are typical of the. Um, Highlands of Peru or Highlands of Bolivia area from uh, dating back probably to the Tiwanaku culture. Greetings, Canada. Greetings, Poland and Germany. So do any, any of you have any specific questions you'd like me to address? Greetings, San Diego and Chicago. Well, the Conehead people died out. In the case of the Paracas on the coast of Peru here, they died out 2,000 years ago. 
Uh, some of them existed up until the last century in places like Melanesia and also Congo, but uh, missionaries and governments uh, forbade the um, elongation or the cranial deformation process probably in the 1960s or 70s. Okay, Milan, uh, the uh, elongated greetings, Norway. Um, what we found out about the elongated skulls of Paracas, at least, is that, again, you can see here what's called the foramen magnum. And in your skull, it's located here in the center of, uh, of your skull. In the Paracas, it's two and a half centimeters back. So that is a genetic anomaly as are the two holes in the back of the skull here. So those are two of the characteristics that uh, mean that the original Paracas people were not Homo sapiens sapiens. They were at least a subspecies of human being that was able to breed with uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. Uh, no academic is addressing this. I'm basically the only one doing it. And that's why we're doing uh, more DNA testing that'll keep, keep going on. Uh, snorkeling in Lake Titicaca? No, but we actually were on a boat and we went out and we saw uh, structures underwater in the shallow water. Um, actually, the surface area of Lake Titicaca underwater is quite clear, but once you get down about 60 feet, then it becomes very murky. So that's why Cousteau had a difficult problem when he put one of his mini subs into Lake Titicaca. They couldn't see anything. Um, Origins of the Anunnaki. I, I, I don't know. I haven't really studied the Anunnaki. I'm interested in going to the Middle East, probably starting uh, around 2020. I've been to Lebanon and to Jordan so far, but uh, someday would love to go to Iran and Iraq and uh, places like that. Uh, ancient Samaria sites would be great. Uh, Lake Titicaca? Uh, some parts of Lake Titicaca are 40 feet deep. Some parts of Lake Titicaca are 1,000 feet deep. So it's actually two lakes that are connected. The southern lake is very shallow, but the main lake is very, very deep, uh, up to 1,000 feet deep. How accurate do you find the Bible stories compared to ancient sites? That's what's fascinating. They, uh, they keep, because um, Israel is spending a lot of money on archaeology, uh, they're finding a lot of ancient sites that, uh, that prove the Bible to be an accurate historical document, not just, uh, you know, not made up stories at all. Um, so they know where Temple Mount of course, uh, is where the original two temples were located. They found the city of David, which proves that uh, King David existed 3,000 years ago and that he was the king of the Is uh, Israel Israelites. Uh, were the stones levitated into place? I think in certain locations, like uh, in the highlands of Peru, uh, I think that's the only possible way because the terrain is very mountainous. So moving the stone from uh, the uh, quarries to the locations like Saxe Waman, the quarry is three miles away. The, the basalt quarry for Cusco is more than 50 miles away. And so I don't think there's any alternative than um, anti-gravity of some kind. Uh, there's no way that it was done during Inca times, and there's no way that it was done by normal human means. It had to have been done using lost ancient high technology. There are thousands upon thousands of tons of basalt stone located in the city of Cusco that are pre-Inca in origin. And there is only one quarry. Again, it's located 50 miles or 80 kilometers away. No, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that uh, there's, there are any living descendants. The Paracas died out 2,000 years ago. We know that because they were overtaken by the Nazca people. And so that, uh, that terminated the Paracas time period.
megalithic platform found at Petra, actually they found a, another stone. They've already excavated it. It's 1,600 tons. It's located right next to the stone of the pregnant woman. So we're going to be going there in April and we're going to see that. When we were there last time, two years ago, only the surface of that stone was visible. But um, the stone of the pregnant woman uh, weighs around 1,200 tons. It's still attached to the bedrock. We see the tool marks that look like lost ancient high technology, very similar to the tool marks that we see in the around the Giza Plateau area as well. Thank you, Kyle. Going to space? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, that would cost a lot of a lot of money. Yeah, the obelisk. I think that the the obelisk. I'm making a video right now that I'll play tomorrow or I'll upload tomorrow on my YouTube channel. And by the way, thank you so much for uh, subscribing. I'm going to be uploading a video tomorrow, which are the best aspects from our March 2018 trip, showing things that the Dynastic Egyptians simply could not have made. There's no way, impossible. So that's about a 15 minute video, and it'll be uploaded. Uh, my time, which is Central U.S. time tomorrow, uh, probably by about 10 a.m. or something like that. Is all Abrahamic religions plagiarized from Egyptian religion? No, I don't think so. I think uh, I honestly, I've been watching hours upon hours upon hours of uh, archaeological documentaries from uh, recent excavations in Israel. And it's amazing what they've been uncovering in the last, say, 10 years, uh, showing that the Bible is a historical account. Uh, so that's why I I'm, was hoping in going in September of next year. But now instead, we're going to go to the Black Sea, uh, the Crimea part of Russia, and we're going to look for elongated skulls in the Crimea area. Since we're going to have a Turkey tour there in, in September, it's only a one and a half hour flight from Istanbul to Crimea. So we're gonna do that right after the Turkey tour and, uh, and see if we can find some of the elongated skulls in museums there, and compare them with the Paracas. What ancient mystery would you like to see revealed in a movie for the masses? Um, I think a scientific study of Atlantis would be good at this at this point in time. Um, so there are a few ancient places I, I still haven't been. I've been to most of the ones I've wanted to see, but uh, the Middle East uh, is becoming a fascination now. The Nazca mummies, as in the... Um, as in the alien Nazca mummies, they've been proven to be fake. They've been proven to be body parts of humans or body parts of, of animals and humans put together. So you can basically say that those uh, Nazca mummies that have been put on uh, YouTube and TV and stuff like that are fake. Uh, the one called Maria is most likely a Paracas skull with a Nazca period body uh, because the time period of the body, I think they took samples and, and uh, radiocarbon tested the samples of the body aspect, and they uh, it shows that that body is from the Nazca period, but the skull is elongated. The Nazca didn't have elongated skulls, the Paracas did. Paracas preceded uh, the, the Nazca, so it's probably a combination stuck together. Well, John, um, the academics don't, uh, they don't really fight me at all. They just ignore me and that's okay because my mission is to deliver information to you, the general public. There's no point in dealing with academics anymore because none of them are interested in the, uh, the DNA results of the Bracus, including the archeologist from Peru that was the head of our study. He's not interested. So why would anybody else be? That's why we have ongoing testing happening to get more and more results. The Atacama humanoid of Stephen Greer, I, I don't know, I'd love to see it. I very much doubt that it's a human being. Uh, I don't think it's some kind of disease that caused it to be, to be so small. 
It looks like an alien life form to me. Supposedly other ones have been found in the Atacama area. So we'll just have to see what, uh, uh, what comes up in future about that. Um, more excavations at Puma Punku? I don't know. That's a good question. They're really slow. And actually, they've been burying some of the evidence more than they've been uncovering it. So Puma Punku is kind of frustrating that way. But that's why I go and document everything in 4K video and upload it for you on YouTube so that you can see what's, what's going on at Puma Punku and Tiwanaku. Uh, clearly, those were not places that were originally created by the Tiwanaku culture. Had, high technology had to be used, like very advanced technology. Uh, at least what we have, if not more advanced than what we have. Uh, yes, we can we can match DNA to living cultures in Europe. That's again why we're going to the Black Sea area because the best elongated skulls, aside from those found in Paracas, Peru, are the ones found in the Crimea area, and so that's again why we're doing more DNA testing. It could be aliens or it could be extinct ancient races. Um, that, again, is why we have to do more DNA testing. Yeah, uh, actually, Jimmy and I, are a uh, bright insider, are, are connected. I just watched his latest video. I gave him a raving positive review, and he thanked me for that. So he and I are, correct, are connected, as well as Praveen, the guy in India, who's doing all that incredible work uh, finding ancient tool marks, uh, machine marks and stuff in India. We're going to India in January of 2020. So we have space on our tour if you want to join, hiddenincatours.com. The magnetic anomalies at Puma Punku, uh, that's an on ongoing study. Uh, it's not like one constant magnetic energy we're picking up. We're picking up different uh, strengths of it, depending upon what surface you're testing. So we're going back in October to study that some more with a, a group of people. Yeah, the connection with, with uh, Jesus' resurrection and the winter solstice uh, it seems pretty clear uh, that, that there is a connection. <clears throat> it's not proven that Jesus actually uh, died in December 2,000 years ago. Uh, that was probably an, an amalgamation of, uh, of different ancient beliefs. Hello, Latvia. Um, actually, uh, Glambor... Um, yeah, I used to follow Graham Hancock. He was one of the foundational people. Um, his book, um, Fingerprints of the Gods, was, you know, is an absolute Bible. I haven't been following him lately. I'm working much more closely with a bunch of other people, though. So, uh, again, uh, Bright Insight is a great YouTube channel. Uh, that's Jimmy's channel. You should check him out. He, he, he does very good work. Yes, we do offer some private tours, but not as much as we have done in the past. Yeah, everyone tweet Joe Rogan and tell him to get me on his on his show. I just emailed him again yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, uh, introduced me uh, him or introduced me to him as to what I've been doing. And uh, I'd love to be on his show. I'm going to be in the Los Angeles area in late May of next year. That's where he's based. That's where the studio is. So if any of you have a way to connect with Joe Rogan, please have him have me as a guest. I'd love that. Uh, actually, just look up Bright Insight. I'm kind of stuck with the screen here, so I can't really poke around. Thank you, Marcus. Yes, everyone tweet Joe Rogan and ask him to put me on his show. Yes, I have done ayahuasca twice. It's a very... Uh, a very serious pursuit, not something to be done on a casual basis. It can be a very much a, a life transforming experience, but it has to be done with a lot of respect. 
Non Madal, I'd love to go to. Um, I'd love to go to non Madal at some point, but it's way the hell off in Micronesia, so pretty difficult to get to, especially from Peru. Uh, the tours average about ten days, so just go to hiddenincatours.com. Uh, here. So there's there's my website hiddenincatours.com. That's where the um, that's where the tours are. All the ones for 2019 or 2018 are full. Toth, I don't I don't really know that much about uh, Thoth or Toth so far. Um, the ground voltage of sites in Peru. I don't even know how you measure that. If you can give me an idea of how that's done. Uh, non Madal supposedly isn't that small because it's, it's also under the water as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I just watched the video about the eye of uh, Africa being Atlantis. It's it's quite fascinating. The dimensions seem to match Atlantis. Uh, the location mm, in the area. Uh, somebody should go at some point and see if they can uh, do some archaeology, see if there's some artifacts that can be found. Supposedly metal artifacts were found. This place is in the middle of nowhere. And supposedly they, they found gold and other artifacts there. The Nazca lines are very complicated. They were made over a period of a thousand years, first by the Paracas culture, then the Nazca culture. The Paracas stuff seems to be quite playful, and uh, some of the lines relate to underground water systems because it basically doesn't rain in Nazca. And then the later Nazca work, Nazca culture work, appears to be more um, symbolic and ceremonial. What's the most fascinating thing that I have found? Um, actually, there's no one thing. All of these places are fascinating. We're going back to Easter Island in October. And so hopefully we'll get better access, maybe access to the quarry, I'm not sure. Suppose that's quite difficult to get access to. But Easter Island's very fascinating. Egypt is fascinating. Uh, Peru and Bolivia are fascinating. Is Michael Tellinger trustable? Well, Michael Tellinger is a friend of mine. Um, I think he's a very wonderful person, but as regards his theories, you really have to make up your own mind as far as what you believe. Why did the crop circle buzz just stop? I didn't know that it was. We'll actually be in that area in a couple of weeks, so I'll, I'll see what the latest stuff is. Yes, I think Egyptologists have, have uh, hidden lots of evidence. And that's why it's important for independent <coughs> researchers to go to places like Egypt and film and, and stuff like that in order to be able to reveal. If you look up on my uh, YouTube channel, The Osiris Shaft, you'll see uh, my 4K documentary about going into the Osiris Shaft that clearly is pre-dynastic, was done using high technology. I know James Gilliland, but I've actually never been to his Iseti ranch. I'll see him in June of next year at Contact in the Desert. And um, so, yeah, any of you who would like to meet me, I'll be at Contact in the Desert May 31st to June 3rd next year um, at, De uh, what's it called, Indian Wells, California. No, there are no people today who have elongated skulls, though we have seen photographs of a couple of people who seem to have them. I don't know who Pinkman is. Easter Island being on the past equator, that's a great question because a lot of the ancient sites around the world are located on one line. I think it's 19 degrees off. So uh, Easter Island goes through Paracas, then goes through Cusco, 
then I think it goes through uh, Giza and uh, Mohenjo-Daro and other locations like that. So a lot of ancient megalithic sites are located on this line, which presently is 19 degrees, but the earth is, the earth was hit by a cataclysm, making that 19 degree or 23 and a half degree difference. So it could be the 12,000 plus years ago uh, that uh, Easter Island was on the equator and Paracas. We're going to Pumapunku in October. I yeah, I just looked at a, um, I just looked at uh, a video about the Piri Rees map yesterday, very fascinating, made of much more ancient source maps. Well, the last cataclysm happened 11,700 years ago or about 12,000 years ago. And supposedly, according to Paul Laviolette, this is a cycle of every 13,000 years. So we're reasonably close to that. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen in my lifetime. Thoughts on Antarctica? Um, thoughts on Antarctica? Well, I think that they've discovered something very fascinating in Antarctica and they're not releasing it. The information so hopefully ancient or hopefully independent researchers will be able to go there i won't be one of them uh, i can't stand cold weather because i grew up in canada and so uh i'm hoping uh, that people will go there and be able to put stuff up on youtube what type of cataclysm well if you look at um, my book aftershock i think it was a series of different events i think uh, energy came from galactic center and entered our solar system and wreaked havoc. I think that's why we have a 23 and a half degree uh, tilt to our axis. The elongated skull people are all dead, as far as I can tell. I I don't know. You'd have to look up for the uh, for the Black Sea and see if it's uh, if it's related to the. Uh, Oh, Waikiki. You mean Waikiki? Yeah, Waikiki is located in a little museum in the village or town of Andawailias. Yes, I am acquainted with the LAI Russian channel. Well, Cody, I don't think people... I don't think modern people would really be all that shocked if all of a sudden we found out that aliens have been here for a long time. I myself, I'm, I'm really sick and tired of the cover-up. I think it makes sense to release this information now. Why would powers that be withhold ancient historical information? Because it's a form of control. If you control knowledge of history, you can control the present. If you control the present, you can control the future. So all of this information is now leaking out and they can't really control it anymore because they don't have eyes everywhere. Rio de la Plata as in Argentina. Um, I haven't heard of anything, but you never know. Yes, I think we've developed anti-gravity ships. Uh, the elongated people, uh, elongated skull people, are at least a subspecies of human of Homo sapiens sapiens. They are not Homo sapiens sapiens. Yeah, the New Earth channel is is great. Am I a Paracas? Not as far as I know. Uh, I haven't heard of the um, recent sightings in San Diego. Uh, Chinchoro and uh, Paracas mummies. Uh, Chinchoro mummies are a lot older. They're about 8,000 to 6,000 years old. The Paracas are about 3,000 to 2,000. And the distance between them is reasonably far. So um, they may be hiding some much more interesting ones. I went to the museum in Chile that has the collection of the Chinchoro, but they don't have anything that fascinating on display. They have cranial deformation. Ah, thank you very much, Karen. Very kind of you. Is Stonehenge, Stonehenge connected to the Great Pyramids? I don't think so, because Stonehenge is not very well made. Uh, the stones are big, 
Again, that's why we're going back this we're going back this month with a lady called Maria Wheatley. We're going going, uh, going to have a private uh, tour of the inside of Stonehenge. Most people have to stay outside the fence, but we actually get to go inside. So that'll be great to be able to film. And then I'm going to take my quadcopter to film outside of Stonehenge in order to get some good 4K Vista views. Gunan Padang, uh, yeah, at some point, maybe in 2020 or 2021, uh, we're, we're planning on a, an India tour in January of 2020, and then maybe in 2021, we'll do Indonesia and uh, Cambodia. Well, Stonehenge is underwhelming when you compare it with the stuff in Egypt, that's for sure. I saw Stonehenge for the first time when I was 16 years old and coming from Canada, it was very impressive. But then when you go to Egypt, woo, there's no comparison. Uh, visit Scotland when you're, when I'm in the UK, unfortunately, no, we don't have enough time. So we're going to West Yorkshire, then we're going to Glastonbury in that area. And then we have to fly back to Peru. Oh, Harrogate. Well, actually, why don't you come to, um, Come to the UFO conference. If you look up ufomagazine.co.uk, then you'll see uh, where this, this uh, two-day seminar is that we're going to be giving, 15th and 16th. Uh, it's in a little village in West Yorkshire, but um, look up ufomagazine.co.uk and you'll see exactly where it is. It's called, uh, the village is called, or town, it's called Holmfirth. Did Egyptians use electricity in the pyramids? I don't think so. I, I think uh, there was some kind of high-tech energy involved in the interior of the Great Pyramid, but I don't think it was electricity. What we do see in the Serapium at Saqqara, where the giant 100-ton uh, stone boxes are located, and again, that video I'll be uh, uploading tomorrow morning, um, that shows you there's no soot on the ceiling in these tunnels. So some kind of technology in terms of light had to be in there for them to move the boxes, but uh, it may have, may have been a portable kind of light. Well, tunnels in the Sacred Valley, yeah, we're still trying to find more information about them. Uh, there's lots of talk that they exist, but uh, actually getting access, we're working on it. Yes, it looks like stone and vibration was utilized in terms of the manufacture of, of a lot of the structures in ancient Egypt. Uh, whatever was used in Peru seems to be even more exotic. Uh, hollow earth, no, I don't really believe in that. Yeah, the, the black boxes are, are, are the smoking gun. That's why you'll enjoy the video that I upload tomorrow because it, uh, it highlights the most uh, interesting stuff we saw in March of this year that does not in any way, shape, or form fit in with uh, dynastic Egyptian technology whatsoever. Uh, new tombs are being found all the time in, uh, in Egypt. They're, they're doing a lot of excavating now, so that's why it'll be great to go in April next year and see what the latest stuff is. The uh, Richat structure known as the Eye of, uh, Eye of the... Uh, of Africa, maybe it is Atlantis. That's a brand new video that I just saw um, done by Bright Insight. The wall behind me is white. It's just that the sunlight is now coming in this direction. No, the Sphinx is not a tomb, but as you'll see tomorrow, there's an access in the back of it that we saw. I actually, I filmed the access. There's a, near the, the back of the rump of the Sphinx, there's a grate that comes out, and there is a ladder inside, a metal ladder that goes down. So um, the Sphinx does have an entrance in the back. It also has an entrance underneath the front paws in the front. Uh, the so-called Nazca mummies, yes, they are fakes. 
What's under the Sphinx? A shaft and tunnel system. It goes throughout the whole Giza Plateau. Uh, Hugh who? The Osiris shaft may be connected to the tunnel uh, system under the Giza Plateau, you know, the rest of the tunnel system under the Giza Plateau. I've been four levels under the Giza Plateau, and so I know there are tunnels. I filmed it probably four years ago, There's at least one video on my YouTube channel about uh, being in the tunnel system. The Atacama alien, um, I don't know, it might be an alien. Hugh Newman, yeah, I used to work with Hugh Newman, but I don't anymore. Uh, Randall Carlson is absolutely brilliant. Uh, he gives, uh, his analysis is profound. He very much thinks out of the box. He's a great intellectual, a great geologist, but he's not stuck in the ac academic thought process. So he's very, um, he's very, uh, very intelligent man. I'd love to meet him. Maybe he and I could be on Joe Rogan together. Yeah, high high freq well, frequency sound could be used to cut and mold rocks and move them. Uh, the, uh, the pyramids of the Giza Plateau were very complicated. The Ica stones are fake. I'll tell you that much. No, no one's tried to reproduce the sex at Waman Walls. Father Crespi? Uh, yeah, I've done quite a bit of research about Father Crespi and his ancient artifacts, some of which appear to be um, Sumerian in origin. I'd love to go on Joe Rogan. Please contact him and ask, ask him to have me on when I'm in Los Angeles late May of next year. Egyptologists have no opinion about the high technology theory. They think everything was done with, done with bronze chisels and stone hammers and just completely ridiculous. Well, Mad Wack, I didn't know that Northern uh, Alberta had any strange stuff. We're still researching the differences between body structure of normal humans and elongated skulls. We do know that their necks were thinner and longer than normal. Um, and so that, you know, that obviously makes them not homo sapiens sapiens. There's something else. I've seen no, no good evidence of the hollow earth theory. Also the flat earth theory. I think they cut the stones, use, at least in Peru, using uh, high vibrational technology. How was the face of the Great Sphinx damaged? It was actually shot up by, I think, Turkish soldiers. It wasn't done by Napoleon. It was done before that. The lid of Palenque, I, I don't think it represents a spaceship. Anything in Russia I'd like to investigate? Well, we're going to Crimea in uh, September of next year. I don't think the uh, so-called megaliths in, um, in Russia are real, but uh, the uh, Crimea area seems very fascinating. Could there be megalithic structures in the Amazon? Maybe. Uh, I think the, the higher areas of the, of the Amazon the mud fossil guy, he and I, and I, uh, he and I are in contact. Uh, so I've been looking at his stuff, but uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. The Sphinx, I believe, was a lion, not a dog. The Ica stones are fake because my teacher, Senior Juan Navarro, showed me how they were fake. They almost all of them, if not all of them, were made starting in the 1960s. I know the lady or a lady who still makes them. Uh, we're going to do DNA testing of the Waikiki skull 
probably in October. The loss of the Brazilian, uh, the Brazil National Museum is horrific. Uh, hopefully it wasn't arson, but my God, something like 20 million artifacts destroyed. Well, Anunnaki, because I've shown photographs of the megalithic stuff in Russia and uh, the geologists told, have told me that they're natural formations. Some of them look very close to being megalithic artificial creations, but I don't know. Bosnian pyramids, I don't know, I, I haven't been, so I don't know. Well, we are transforming history by having discussions like this. That's, that's what's important. It's not that uh, we depend 100% um, on academics to do this work. Why should we bother? Uh, the tunnels that have the big boxes are in what's called the Serapium at Saqqara. Yes, I do believe in God. I'm sure Syria has a lot of sites that are being destroyed, which is very sad. King Tut, no, King Tut was supposedly of European extraction. He wasn't black African. Those are the Nubians or the people of, uh, of very southern Egypt. Uh, where there are pyramids as well. The Eye of Africa is very fascinating. I've, I've only started studying it now. I think uh, modern humans go back 200,000 years. Megaliths in Southern California? I, I don't think so, not that I've heard. I think they are doing disclosure. It's just that it's very slowly happening. Uh, Israel, the samples are now at the lab in Canada. And so I, I, it's confirmed that they're at the lab. Uh, yesterday was a holiday. And so I'm waiting to hear from the lab, from Stephen at the lab. <clears throat> he said we should have results within four weeks, maybe earlier. Um, I think there are bases on the moon and Mars, but I don't know if they're ours. I don't, I don't think there are any um, other subspecies of humans on the earth now, but I think we as Homo sapiens sapiens uh, wiped out a lot of ancient uh, subspecies. Jacques Vallée, yes, I very much have heard of him. Carbon-14 dating on Puma Punku, um, very difficult to do. Links between India and Egypt, not as far as I know, but I haven't been to Egypt yet, so I'm still waiting to, to find out. No, uh, no bone, no animal bones were ever found in the Serapium. I've never heard of sec a secure team. It's not up to the government to disclose. It's up to those that wish to, to disclose. So that could be almost anybody. The magnetic anomalies at Pumapunku we're still working on. No, uh, Abraham, I haven't been to India yet. I'm going in January, 2020. Well, GP, I don't really get along with Graham Hancock or Ro and Robert Schock anymore. I used to be closely associated with them, but we've gone our separate ways. So um, that's that. Start a podcast. Um, actually, I enjoy doing this. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, 
for the future, I'll, I'll try to do uh, some um, podcasts when we're in England. Again, we're leaving in, in a few days. So we'll... Uh, dowsing, yes, I'm going to get some dowsing rods when I'm in England. I'm going to be working with Maria Wheatley, who's an expert dowser. So I'm going to take some dowsing rods, uh, and use them at Stonehenge, and then bring them back to Canada. Yes, I'd love to be on Joe Rogan. Please contact him and have him contact me. My website is hiddeninkatours.com, and that's where uh, you can. I have a contact form. Yeah, this is podcasting and Q and A, and I, I really enjoy it. The Eye of Horus. It could be Atlantis. I just learned about it uh, relatively well, actually today. No experiences with uh, with DMT. I'll be uh, Jacques. I'll be in Giza in April of uh, 2019, and then we're also going to Baalbek in Lebanon and Petra in Jordan. Have I ever seen UFOs? Yes, on four different occasions, and. Uh, I believe, I definitely believe that UFOs exist. Thanks, Moxitron. Come to uh, come to Home Firth on the fifteenth and sixteenth, and we can meet up and have a couple of pints. Uh, Justin, yes, going to India in January of twenty twenty. I don't know what League Project is, but if you can uh, email me and send me a link, that would be great. Puma Punku. Um, I think Puma Punku was discovered by the uh, Tiwanaku civilization about 2,000 years ago, buried in mud. They didn't make much use of it, but they next door is Tiwanaku, which they definitely had as their center. Um, I'm, I'm not exploring the oceans for megalithic structures, but I know there are some off the southern coast of India. No, I've never seen UFOs in uh, Egypt, but I have here in Peru. We'll be seeing lots of ancient sites in, in India. We're going to the Elephanta Caves and other ancient caves and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, India had uh, equivalent technology to, technology to Egypt or possibly even more complex. Aliens may have been responsible for influencing megalithic work. I'm not ruling anything out. I know that they weren't done by the cultures attributed to them, so somebody had to be more um, more highly skilled. Yes, yeah, we're going to uh, Kailasa Caves in Elora, definitely. No, I haven't been able to do a paperback copy on the cops yet because there aren't enough pages. You have to have 100 pages. I only have like 65, so I'll have to do more research about the cops and then expand it so I can, um, I can have it as a... Uh, as a paperback. Well, Maria, then please go to my website, hiddeninkatours.com uh, tours, and you'll see the full description of the tour that we're going to do. And yes, we're going to study the concept of the Vimanas when we're in India. Polygonal walls in, in Italy, I think they are definitely very ancient. Um, and so they could be thousands upon thousands of years. Yes, Praveen Mohan, a phenomenal, a phenomenal travel videos, has a great channel, quite brilliant. The CTK, I don't know who they are. Uh, best guess for ancient stone cutting technology, it depends, in Egypt, it was technology that we understand, but on a much more profound scale, as in giant saws and 
drills that are 500 times more uh, faster than uh, or more efficient than what we have. If anyone wants my email address, there's my email address if you want to um, contact me about anything. Cusco locals, uh, the ones that are informed, they know that the Inca didn't build them. And actually more of the tour guides are coming up to me and shaking my hand, thanking me for the work I'm doing. The China pyramids appear simply to be mounds of earth that were obviously artificially created, but they're not giant blocks like, they, uh, like um, in Egypt. Uh, actually, Lake Titicaca gets a lot of rain. We're, well, James, we're working on the anomalies of the elongated uh, skull skeletons now. No, I don't think Nefertiti's bust is a fake. I think that's what she looked like. They also recently did a, a recreation in 3D of her, and she looks like what her ancestry probably was, which uh, I think is Syrian. There, yeah, there are more uh, ruins around Machu Picchu hiding in the, in the jungle. The most amazing megalith, uh, too hard to say. I was blown away by the uh, huge uh, stones in Baalbek. Uh, yep, Nazca gets half an inch of rain a year. Malta probably will go in 2020. My, rev my views on remote viewing, I think it's a great uh, technique. I don't know how to do it, but I definitely believe in those that know how to do it. No, the Paracas were only in the Paracas area, but they may have come from Crimea, the Black Sea area. That's where the DNA seems to match. No, the Assyrian pillars are no longer in the shaft. I, I don't know if they took them out or bro broke them or what they did to them. Do the pharaohs, uh, the pharaohs, at least during Akhenaten's time period, um, seem to suggest an ancestry of elongated skulls. Uh, no, I don't really talk to Eli Marzulli anymore. I'm really glad with the work that he and I did together. Third phase of moon, Thir third phase of moon. Thank you so much for the donation. Very kind of you. Any questions from the great brothers from the big island of Hawaii? And uh, third phase of moon is a great channel that you should all subscribe to. They produce videos almost daily and uh, very insightful stuff. Why won't they excavate more of Peru? Well, they actually are, but um, they're not really excavating around the megalithic parts. They're excavating the Inca aspects, uh, but there, there's lots of megalithic stuff that is in the high part of the, uh, of, of the highlands of Peru that um, I have access to because I have local Guides, Christopher Dunn's theory still holding up? I don't know. I haven't read anything new from Christopher Dunn for five or six years, so I don't know what his um, what his uh, recent ideas are. I think the Giza pyramids were energetic structures, not necessarily electricity, but energy uh, collectors and distributors, and I think that that's what the uh, – the great um, obelisks were for were for uh, for collecting, or they were like the receivers of, of the Wi-Fi or, or the energy that came from the Great Pyramid. But the those pyramids seem to have turned off somewhere around eleven or twelve thousand years ago. The Kipu system, um, yeah, the Kipu system is the re recording system of the ancient uh, Inca people. There's also another system the Inca had called the Tokapu, which is a glyph system that the Inca had. So if you look up Tokapu on the internet, then you'll see that the Inca had at least two recording systems of uh, numbers and also po possibly language. Uh, Marcus, which stones are you referring to? Well, S. Lion, we're talking about anything.
Now, this, the kipus are a system of knotted cords used for um, statistics and also possibly language. What is Egypt hiding? Well, probably 85% of ancient Egypt is actually underground, as in tunnels and structures underground. Even some Egyptologists will tell you that if, if, you don't, if they don't speak on record, but uh, they will tell you that much of ancient Egypt was built underground, uh, not under the sand, but built in the bedrock. Yeah, everyone check out third phase of moon. Yeah, we're visiting the Crimea in order to compare the shapes of the elongated skulls because they seem to be incredibly similar. We're trying to get access to the, um, to the tunnel system in Peru, uh, and that's why one of the reasons I, I live in Peru. Uh, ground penetrating radar, I guess could see the tunnels in Egypt, but uh, very expensive equipment. Yep, I, uh, I'm a friend of Michael Tellinger's. The South African stone circles, uh, I don't know. I've been there, I've seen them. They weren't done with high technology, but there are lots of them. Cuba, not yet, love, love to. Well, I'm fascinated with the idea of going to uh, India in January of 2020. The Chinese pyramids, uh, they're large artificial constructions, um, but they appear to have been done with earth, like giant mounds. Uh, I don't know who Alan Butler is. The new cavity in the Great Pyramid, that's what we're gonna find out when we go in April of next year, because we have lots of resources and people in Egypt on the ground. That's the best way to do it, trying to speculate or trying to find stuff on the internet is it's kind of pointless when you have actual people there. Connection between pyramids in Egypt and Mexico? No, I don't think so. The uh, pyramids in Mexico are complex, but uh, a little bit of lost ancient high technology possibly involved. But uh, the ones in Egypt are absolutely profound. I think... Uh, Having Hawass and Hancock in a boxing match would be a complete waste of time. I've never heard of a mini Great Wall of China in California, but that's interesting. The black granite sarcophagus uh, is pre-dynastic. The fact that it's actually in Alexandria is quite fascinating, uh, but it looks just like the ancient boxes that we find at the megalithic sites. So that means there is an a megalithic aspect to, um, to Alexandria, which I didn't know about. Yeah, there still are some casing stones on the Great Pyramid at Giza, some on the bottom of the Third Pyramid and some on the bottom of the Great Pyramid as well. Copper mines in the Great Lakes, yep, there are pure copper mines in the Great Lakes area that could have been exploited 3,000 plus years ago. Thank you, Jason, very kind of you. Okay, so let's go for another few minutes and then I'm afraid I have to go. No, the, the Paracas lived a long time before the Inca. The Paracas died out 2000 years ago. The Inca rose about a thousand years ago. Persepolis in Iran, it does look megalithic. Well, if I could go to any place, now it would be um, Turkey, and that's where we're going in September of next year, and then India, and that's where we're going to in uh, January of, of 2020. I've never heard of the Kybalion alchemy. Yes, I'm in contact with Praveen. Um, phenomenal channel, uh, phenomenal travel videos channel is great. You should look, uh, look him up. 
We're, we're going to start studying the RH negative factor possibilities of the Paracas very soon. We simply need to get access to samples first. CFAPPS7865, yeah, that's a great channel too. Uh, the latest results from the elongated skulls of, of Peru will come in within about a month. Uh, Dennis Ovens, there's not all that much uh, knowledge known. It's growing. Uh, first historic mention of the Nazca Lions was actually by one of the Spanish chroniclers, I think in the 17th century. Who drilled in the, who drilled the hole in the head of the Sphinx on top of the head? Uh, that I don't know, but I know they did pour concrete in to hide it. Yes, we are going with Patricia to India, Abraham. Yep, she's been twice before, so it's always good to go with someone who's been there. Uh, we might meet up with Praveen as well. I mean, uh, conversing with him with the possibility uh, of, um, of having him be part of the tour. Reed boats capable of international maritime travel. Yes, that's been proven by Thor Heyerdahl. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Kagloon. Very kind of you. What happened to Tannis? Tannis exploded. Tannis is in the Nile Delta of Egypt, and some cataclysmic event blew up Tannis. And I'm not talking relatively recently. I'm talking a long time ago. The soil there is no longer soil. It's like um, flour. It has no um, nutrients in the soil. Plants can't grow there. So something of intense heat struck that place probably caused the, the soil to go up in the air and then come back down and buried all of Tannis. Almost everything of Tannis is megalithic and the quarry for the granite of Tannis is at Aswan. That's something like 700 miles away or more. Okay, thank you so Um, I'm, we're going to be seeing some dolmens when we go to England this month, so we'll see. I'm interested in what's going uh, what's going on in Antarctica, but I don't want to go to Antarctica. I grew up in in Canada, and I know what cold is like, and I don't like cold anymore. Yeah, the rock wall in Rockwall, Texas, appears to be megalithic, but um, I think it's been covered up. Okay, thank you so much to all of you from all over our beautiful planet. Thank you. I hope you enjoy these, um, these uh, question and answer sessions. We'll try to do some when um, I'm in the U.S. next week, and then also when we're in um, England, and then when we're on tour in uh, Peru and Bolivia, and also in Egypt, and on and on it goes. Uh, I'll be doing more live streaming when I'm in places like Egypt and also in the highlands of Peru and hopefully England, uh, as long as the Wi-Fi signal is good, because I know some people like to see stuff live. And so that's what we're going to do. Everyone, please tweet Joe Rogan. So thanks again to all of you uh, from my heart to your heart. From the ancient Paracas people of Peru. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, again, a new video will be going up tomorrow. So the best of ancient Egypt, the best of what the, um, the pharaohs could not have done will be tomorrow. Greetings, Hungary. Thank you, and blessings from Paracas in Peru.